What's going on everybody, Boris here at your College of Design Studio and today we're talking about energy security and diversity. Uh, I have to tell you that's my favorite topic, it's what my current research is uh, focused on. And we're talking about diversity uh, because it makes a difference. Uh, the demand for energy uh, is projected to increase dramatically in the coming years. Uh, we have a growing awareness of the negative effects of burning fossil fuels. Uh, which is generating a demand for clean, renewable energy. The U.S. energy sector is implementing a variety of uh, power generation methods in addition to traditional uh, sources such as nuclear fuel, fossil fuels, and they come in the forms of photovoltaic, solar uh, panels, wind turbines, geothermal plants, such as the ones we see opening up in Nevada, um, and tidal power, municipal waste, uh, biofuels, a variety of, of different sources. Changes in corporate structure and ownership patterns uh, aim to encourage sustainability and ensure prices reflect the true social cost of production, further add to the complexity of the U.S. energy sector, and raise some important questions. What do constituent groups uh, have to gain from diversity, and which constituent groups are most affected by changes in diversity in the domestic energy sector? Do increases in energy source and organizational diversity improve the security of our energy supply? Um, say, for example, how does uh, changes in energy diversity affect the cost consumers pay for energy? Can we use diversity trends to improve energy-related policy? Uh, this research, and um, you can find the links to the paper, to the main research paper. I'm also going to include uh, the data set as an Excel document, and I'll have tutorials on uh, how to use Stata to run some of the regressions for this research. Uh, but this research seeks to answer some of those questions, and the study develops empirical models that utilize data from the Department of Energy and stock market data for U.S. energy companies. Uh, regression analysis is employed to ex um, explain the effects of diversity and other relevant factors on balance, variety, and disparity of energy in the U.S. sector. The research considers the policy implications of diversity. Uh, while early stages of diversification may result in net benefits for both energy companies and consumers, results indicate that over-diversifying energy sources and corporate structures may result in net loss, uh, increases in transaction costs, decreased economies of scale, and increases in implementation costs for sector-wide policy changes are possible reasons for this. The study concludes by examining the current implementation of renewable energy and what diversity means for the U.S. internationally. We begin our study throughout time of diversity in 1949. You can see that a very large dependence existed at that time on coal and oil with uh, natural gas just beginning to emerge. NGPL, that stands for natural gas plant liquids. From 1949 to 1970, we have a slight increase in diversity. We have the emergence of nuclear power at 1%. We finally begin to see some geothermal power plants opening up. It says 0% on here. It's actually less than 1%, um, but it's a very small decimal. But between 1970 and 2011, we see a large increase in diversity. We see the pie chart becoming more diverse, different slices. We see solar, wind, biomass, nuclear now at 11%, natural gas uh, from 17% in 1949 to 30% in 2011, slight decrease from 1970. Crude oil, however, is a lot smaller uh, slice of the pie now. And we can see that with an increase in overall organizational diversity, with different types of plants opening up, we have a smaller dependence on any single sector. Coal in 1949 was 38%. It's now 28%, 10% less. Crude oil goes from 34 to 15%. And one of my hypotheses was that the more stress you put on a single system, for example, oil, the more likely you are to have a system-wide critical incident, such as oil spills or coal uh, plant fires and industrial accidents. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this in a different presentation when we talk about the human aspect of energy diversity and the way it affects mining injuries and mining fatalities. Before we delve into the results of the study, let's take a look at some of the existing literature in the field. Andy Sterling from Sussex University in 2009 defines energy diversity in terms of four different variables, diversity, variety, balance, and disparity. He defines diversity as an evenly balanced reliance on a variety of mutually disparate options. 
Uh, it defines the variety uh, in terms of the number of diverse categories of options into which an energy system may be appointed. Balance as a function of the apportionment of the energy system across the identified options. And disparity uh, is the manner and degree in which energy options may be distinguished. Algebraically, we can look at the sum of a function, although you can see here in the comment in overlay, uh, and we see diversity there defined as the sum of pairwise option disparities weighted in proportion to contributions, where PI and PJ are proportional representations um, of options I and J in a particular disparity space. Uh, Sterling uh, introduces two exponential terms, alpha and beta, and allows them to take all possible permutations uh, between the values of 1 and 0, uh, or, or of the values of 1 and 0. And this way we can capture four properties of interest, uh, the variety, balance, disparity, and diversity of a given energy sector. And Newman takes a look at the Shannon Wiener Index with an added measure of political stability. So basically she takes a look at the fraction of oil or coal imports from a specific country and then rates that country in terms of political stability. And the Shannon Wiener Index simply looks at the number of different species or variables within a data set. So the number of different uh, power plants in the US energy sector, whether they be geothermal, nuclear, uh, and basically counts the frequency distribution of those different types. AF Alaji and James L. Williams in 2003, they consider petroleum and oil as the primary focus of energy security and they look at the number of days of available oil supplies within a nation, specifically the United States, I believe, uh, and while those measures are very effective in certain situations, what I wanted to do was create a comprehensive, um, a holistic method of analyzing energy security and diversity. And to do this, I developed three uh, indices, uh, which we'll see later on in this presentation. But the research questions uh, I looked at. Um, was basically, does diversity affect the security of energy supply? Uh, does diversity affect the number of mining-related deaths? And how do net energy imports measure against total domestic energy production? Now, the answer to the first question is, it does uh, affect the security of energy supply. We can see that with categorical var variables uh, for the OPEC embargoes in 1972, uh, and later on, I believe, 1974. Uh, diversity does affect the number of mining-related deaths, uh, and fatalities and accidents and net imports um, are affected and do affect energy security uh, whether it's renewables wind and solar power and we'll see exactly how uh, they affect energy security here in a moment data is obtained from the u.s energy information administration the mine safety and health administration the departments of energy and labor between the years of 1949 and 2011 and there are 63 observations overall Here's a list of some of the variables used. Um, for example, the year, the average mining deaths, average mining injuries, uh, total types of energy produced, whether it's renewable, coal, wind, solar, and energy consumed, again, broken up in categories. Also consider different explanatory variables, such as um, the consumer price index, US population. Also keep in mind that a lot of the models that we're going to see are growth models or uh, lag log models that use uh, a combination of either regular variables and logarithmic variables or purely all variables independent and uh, dependent in logarithmic form. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this specific research. And these are the three indices uh, I developed in this study. The indices for coal and fossil fuel are calculated as follows. Total consumed energy of a specific energy source minus the total produced of that energy source divided by net imports. This provides a share of surplus or deficiency from net imports. For coal, an index value greater than 58.44 indicates that consumption exceeds production. For fossil fuels, an index value of 48.37 indicates that consumption exceeds production. The higher the value, the greater the shortfall and the larger the portion of net imports. For a majority of years between 1949 and 2011, the fossil fuel security index remains above the critical value. This is in line with our observations of long periods of oil imports and imbalances between domestic consumption and production. Lower values indicate an overconcentration in a specific sector. Notice in uh, this table that we see here, around 1962, the fossil index reached 100 
while the coal index fell to zero. In 1965, the opposite occurred. This depicts when the maximum and minimum values were reached in the time period in question, in 1949 uh, to 2001. It's interesting to note that when the fossil fuel index falls, the coal one rises and vice versa. Theoretically, this makes sense. The two combined are the latest, um, the largest energy sources in the United States. Should production in one source fall, production in the other picks up. This demonstrates an important lesson about the relationship between security and diversity. If the only energy source in the United States in 1965 was coal, then production would have um, would suffer because of diversification. However, the net effect is to smooth out domestic energy production. If a deficiency in one source is identified by the market, the response of energy producers relying on alternative sources is to increase production and meet the demand. This acts as a safeguard against potential energy price volatility and over-dependence on imports. With the advent of renewable energy sources, nascent as though they may be, currently we should expect to see greater increases in energy um, security and organizational diversity and the development of additional indices to monitor the impact of renewables on energy security and diversity. Now the final index that we saw in the previous slide is the net imports index calculated by dividing net imports by total energy produced and then rescaling it from 0 to 100 as the other two indices. What this does is produce an index of the share of total energy production held by net imports. Index values greater than the critical value of 1.554, such as 100 in 1987, does not mean that 100% of total energy produced was represented by net imports. It means that the maximum value for the date range selected of 1949 to 2011 was reached in that year and that something caused net imports to represent a larger portion of total energy produced. Take the two dips that we observe in 1972 and 1974, for instance. Further analysis shows that the decline in index values for those years is due to the OPEC embargoes, which decreased energy import levels during those times. The combination of all three indices provides a holistic representation of the energy sector and creates new opportunities for energy analysis. Here we see the type of different models used in the study. We have ordinary least squares of our basic regression in the form of uh, independent variable, coefficient, a dependent variable, and an error term, y equals bx plus e. And we see one of the equations that was generated by, by Stata. Then we have robust uh, ordinary least squares with robust error terms. Uh, and observations here with small residuals get a weight of one, and the larger the residual, the smaller the weight. Uh, in New West, the New West estimates uh, sees that as the time between error terms increases, the correlation between the error term decreases. Uh, the estimate um, can thus be used to improve ordinary least squares uh, regressions when the variables have heteroscedasticity or the correlation, which we do have in this data set because we're de dealing with uh, time series data. Now let's take a look at our first model dealing with supply security. I begin by asking the following questions. Does diversity affect the security of energy supply? Uh, did the OPEC embargo in the 1970s affect the supply of energy? Do renewables matter in terms of energy security? To answer these questions, several models were developed, three of which are outlined in this table on this slide. Model 1 is an ordinary least squares regression. Uh, variables from total fossil, wind, and other renewable energy in the U.S. population are significant at alpha uh, 0.01 levels. And the OPEC embargo categorical var uh, variable is significant at alpha equals uh, 0 0.05. VIF, value inflation factor, is high at 28.43 with wind energy produced at an individual value of 74.73, suggesting the presence of multicollinearity. Um, uh, if you run a Cook-Weisenberg test for heteroscedasticity, this reveals a probability of 0.109, ruling out heteroscedastic error terms. Uh, the durbin watson D statistic is at uh, 0.9147, indicating positive autocorrelation. Durbin's alternative test indicates serial autocorrelation. If we test for our information criterion, the Akaiki, uh, or I think it's Akaike, AIC, and Schwartz BIC information criterion, we obtain a very large negative value, negative 454.76 and negative 437.62 respectively. Uh, notice these large negative values. If we take the information criterion as an indicator of information lost or entropy, um, as we use the theoretical construct of the model to describe reality, this raises several concerns. Given the high r square value, f statistic, and significant coefficients, we expect a very low information criterion. 
uh, or of low entropy, it's possible that either the model or the variables are incorrectly specified. Another possibility is that we're using the wrong data to describe economic output or energy performance. It's also possible, although unlikely, that no causality exists between the dependent and independent variables used in the model. This does not appear to be the case here. Replacing wind, solar, and other renewables with the aggregate variable total renewables significantly reduces our VIF to 7.26, which is less than 10, uh, the number we're measuring against. Models 2 and 3 address autocorrelation issues by abandoning the ordinary least squares models in favor of new west estimates. And uh, as we saw previously, the t as the time between error term increases, the correlation between the error term decreases. The new west, uh, new west estimator can be used to improve OS regressions when variables have either heteroscedasticity or autocorrelation. On average, holding everything else constant, uh, our data provides sufficient evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate hypothesis, namely that we do have a difference um, or that energy diversity does have an impact on supply side security. In model three, where renewables are aggregated and the new US estimates are used, the renewables categorical variable becomes uh, statistically significant. I, favor, I personally favor model three because all variables are statistically significant and also effectively addresses the issues present in the regular um, OS regression and it adheres to theoretical exp uh, expectations. Interpreting the coefficients, we see that a 1% increase in population leads to a 0.22% increase in total energy produced. We see similar results with our other variables as they increase, so does total energy produced within the United States. Theoretically, this makes sense as we expect the production of energy to increase with the emergence of renewables. Uh, the OPEC embargo, because the energy not imported has to be obtained domestically, or increases in population. Uh, from the results in the table here, we can also see that the production of fossil fuels has by far the largest impact on the security of the supply of the energy sector. A percent decrease in total renewables only decreases total produced energy by 0.09%. However, a 1% decrease in fossil fuel production leads to a 0.81% uh, decrease in overall energy generation. Now let's move on to our net imports uh, index model. I begin by asking the following questions. Do energy imports affect total energy production? How do net energy imports measure against total domestic energy production? Do renewables affect net imports? What impact do various energy sources have on net imports? To answer these questions, several models are developed, three of which were outlined in the table that we see before us. The dependent variable is net imports index, and index I created by dividing net imports by total produced energy. We saw that previously. Um, Model one is again an ordinary least square regression. Variables uh, for total fossil, wind, and other renewable renewable energy and the renewables dummy are significant at alpha equals 0 0.01 and US population at alpha equals 0 0.05. VIF is high at 28.43 again with wind energy produced uh, at the same individual value of 74.73. And again, we have multicollinearity. cook weisenberg test for heteroscedasticity reveals um, a probability of 0 0.0789 suggesting pre a small presence of heteroscedasticity in the air terms. Uh, our D statistic or Durbin Watson statistic is 1.1778 indicating a positive autocorrelation and Durbin's alternative test indicates serial autocorrelation. Again looking at our information criterion, our AIC and BS BIC, we obtain uh, now a large positive value of 347.09 and 364.24 respectively. Uh, notice the large positive values. Again, if we take our information criterion to be an indicator of information lost or entropy, uh, as we use our theoretical construct of the model to describe reality, um, this raises concerns for this model as well. Given the high R squared value, S statistic, uh, the significance of our coefficient, Again, we expect a low information criterion. It's possible that either the variables are misspecified, that we're using the wrong data to describe uh, energy performance, uh, or that uh, no causality exists. But again, that's not the case in this model. Uh, if we replace wind and solar and other renewables with the aggregate of total renewables, VIF is again decreased. Uh, model 2 addresses autocorrelation issues by abandoning the OS model in favor of new West estimates. Um, and again, we reject the null hypothesis in favor of alternate hypothesis, 
and energy imports do affect total domestic energy production. In Model 2, renewables are not ag aggregated uh, while new rest estimates are used, and I favor this model even though the population variable becomes insignificant. Uh, this model effectively addresses the issues present in the OLS regression and significantly reduces standard errors. Interpreting the coefficients, we'd see that both fossil and wind power production are negative. Uh, thus, a 1% increase in wind production reduces net imports by 2.05 units. Uh, it must be noted that all models are in the LINLOG format here. Results do adhere to theoretical expectations as we expect net imports to decrease as domestic energy production increases. Uh, the total fossil fuel coefficient is negative 27.57, exerting a significantly larger impact here on net imports than wind or other renewables, which is positive, suggesting that increases in alternative renewables uh, creates uh, possibly creates inefficiencies. And finally, for our last model, we consider the human aspects of diversity, which we mentioned briefly previously. I begin by asking the following questions. Does diversity affect the number of mining-related fatalities? Does coal production have an impact on mining fatalities? Uh, does energy consumed from sources other than coal affect mining deaths? Does an increase in renewable energy production lower mining fatalities uh, or injuries? To answer these questions, I developed several models, uh, three of which we can see here. Model 1, again, is an ordinarily uh, least squares regression. All variables here are significant at alpha 0.01. VIF is very low at 4.87 uh, and there is no multicollinearity present. Uh, cook weisenberg test for heteroskedasticity reveals uh, a probability of 0 0.0299, suggesting error terms are heteroskedastic. Our D. Watson statistic is 1.01122, um, indicating positive autocorrelation, uh, and the alternate, uh, Durbin's alternative test indicates serial autocorrelation. However, finally, our information criterion here, uh, our AIC and our BIC uh, are small. They're at 36.08 and 46.8 respectively. Um, so notice the small values. Again, if we take the information criterion to be inf uh, an indicator of entropy or information lost, uh, this indicates that the model is a good fit. Given our high R squared value, F statistics, significant coefficients, we do expect low information uh, criterion, which is indeed what we have. Model 2 uses new rest estimates to address the presence of heteroskedasticity and or correlation in the OS regression. We see uh, in the table here that the coefficients do not change. The only difference lies in the renewables dummy, which drops in significance from alpha 0 0.01 to 0.1. On average, holding everything constant, we can reject our null hypothesis in favor of the alternate and we see that diversity in energy sources does indeed have an impact on mining fatalities. In Model 3, we use a Poisson distribution. The average number of mining fatalities is sufficiently low that we can think of it as a count variable. Uh, so given um, that recorded mining fatalities occur at a fixed interval of time, independently of time since the last event, we can use the Poisson distribution to create a discrete probability distribution that expresses the probability of an event, such as mining fatalities, to occur. Model 3 does not use logarithmic variables as models 1 and 2 do. Uh, it uses variables in the original units. I favor model 3 because all variables are statistically significant uh, and it effectively addresses the issues present in the OLS regression uh, as it, and again it adheres to our theoretical expectations. Recall that our uh, dependent variable, average mining fatalities, is a count variable. The Poisson regression models of the log of the expected count as a function of the predictor variables. Uh, we can in interpret uh, the Poisson regression coefficient as follows. For a one unit change in the predictor variable, the difference in the logs of expected counts is expected to change by the respective regression coefficient, given that other predictor variables in the model are held constant. Uh, thus, a one unit change in coal produced creates a negative 0.441 unit decrease in our dependent variable. This does not adhere to our theoretical expectations as we expect mining fatalities to increase as coal production increases. The average mining injuries variable has a coefficient of 49.44. It is positive as we expect, but we do not expect that a one unit change in injuries will produce a 49 unit change in fatalities. While the variables are all highly statistically significant and model misspecification errors have been addressed, it may be unwise to use the coefficients as predictors. 
We can, however, say that diversity, energy consumption, and coal production do have an impact on mining fatalities, though we may not be able to predict the exact um, numerical effect on our independent or on our dependent variable mining fatalities. So as a result, we observe that we have a stable coal supply. We're over-concentrated in fossil fuels. Uh, mining deaths and injuries decrease with uh, diversification and safety regulations potentially make a difference. Uh, that's one possible explanation for why uh, injuries and fatalities in the mining sector have been on a decrease, even though coal production or coal extraction might have remained the same or even increased over the years. Uh, we saw in the pie charts that coal makes a smaller portion of, of the pie chart. That doesn't mean that we produce less coal. That just means that coal as a... Uh, uh, overall component of the energy sector represents a smaller uh, slice. And we also see that uh, renewables can potentially crowd out more effective energy sources, but they do increase the stability of domestic energy supply from external influence. This study is aimed to show the value of a multifaceted comprehensive analysis of security and diversity in the energy sector. Several models were posed as a way to analyze different energy sources and relevant variables. Three indices were developed to monitor and investigate changes in energy diversity and security as related to coal, fossil fuels, and end imports as a fraction of total produced energy over a period of 63 years. Finally, two specific policy changes are proposed in the main paper, which you can find on our website or collegedesigns.com feed. Uh, one dealing with how to increase the efficiency of our agricultural sector, the other with how to slow down and prevent urban sprawl. Agricultural waste contributes to energy consumption and pollution, the effects of which um, on energy diversity and security are currently undetermined. Urban sprawl wastes vast amounts of energy that could otherwise be put to productive uses. And the proposals aim to address these two specific problems that affect the energy sector, even, they, uh, even though they may not seem directly related to it. Future research should examine the effects of environmental change on energy security, such as how pollution affects the security of the energy market portfolios or how escalations in global temperature may affect energy security or energy sector diversity and individual choice as related to energy consumption. Another opportunity for further research lies in government intervention in the energy sector through taxation and regulations and the distortionary effects this may have. Uh, future studies may also choose to examine the effects taxes have on energy diversity or whether government safety regulations contributed to a reduction of mining fatalities and injuries. Uh, thank you for tuning in, folks. Thanks for watching. Again, you can find a lot of our research materials. You can find these slides, um, a PDF poster, uh, the main body of the paper, and very soon the Excel document containing the data on our website. And in the following weeks, I'm going to put together a few tutorials on how to run uh, these regressions through Stata. Uh, and how to create the outputs um, because you can you can program Stata to do a lot of interesting things and one of them um, simplifies my work a lot by basically outputting the tables as you saw them they just need a little tweaking um, but again there's, there's a lot of options that can be used for Stata uh, for research and I'd like to throw together uh, some tutorials to show uh, how this project came about and how it was completed again thanks for tuning in uh, to our College of Designs production, and I'll see you next time.